Ah, the NES top loader. It just works, you know? Well, it works. But the video output on these is crap. Even in a region that you're supposed to use it in. <laughs> um, my buddy Admidst Storm here on YouTube uh, messaged me about how these apparently are basically not usable in PAL regions. Uh, you apparently have a very loud hum in the audio, uh, loud enough that you basically can't hear anything. You can't hear any of the regular audio, and it, that makes it unplayable. So, um, it has something to do with the RF, and this only has RF. Uh, audio video output looking on the back that's all you get so what you have to do is um, make a composite video out modification and hopefully that will get rid of your problem or at least at least a uh, you can have a composite audio out I guess and that should work right uh, which is really simple. There's just a spot on the motherboard that you can steal the audio from and just wire that up to a jack. But additionally, since uh, Nintendo, whoever designed the layout of this thing, wasn't thinking very hard, and even after you add the composite video output, uh, you still have vertical lines going across the screen, and it kind of still looks like crap. Um, and it's not just the fact that it's RF again. That's after you modify it. Modify it the easy way. So, I will either send him this uh, console, or he will send me one and I will mod the other one, the one that I get, or whatever. But, I'm willing to send this one. I just finished modding this. As we look on the back, we've got three nice little jacks. Uh, the one that's set a little bit farther apart, it's the video out. And this isn't really true stereo, it's actually still mono, but you can obviously still plug in to uh, jacks in there and get uh, sound out of both of your speakers. And I will show you what happens on the inside. Now, I could have, oops, looks like I need to tie this down a little bit better. I could have easily um, just pulled the video off of um, right before it goes back here into the RF box because that's just a composite video line going into the RF box along with the audio line going into the RF box and then it combining them and putting them through the port so that you can use your RF switch. Uh, but like I said, if I use the actual video circuit that goes through here it would not actually improve the video quality that much except for it would get rid of the stuff that RF does to the video signal, you know, the graininess and kind of just a bad signal. Um, and the way to get around that, the way to get crystal clear, perfect, um, perfect video out of these, just like on a regular NES, the regular toaster one or whatever everyone calls it these days, is to um, relocate the entire video circuit from when it comes out of the PPU, which is this chip under here. There's the CPU and the G or the PPU. That's what they call it. There's uh, there's one line on there, and that's literally just composite video out on pin 21, I believe, uh, which is this green wire going up here. Um, this little black thing is a amplifier. Uh, and then some resistors and stuff to get things in the right impedance or whatever. I don't know exactly why you put resistors on there. I'm not an expert. Um, and then a capacitor and a filter. Uh, so basically we're taking this, this actually this um, filter as well as the amplifier used to be on the board. I had to add this other smaller um, regular capacitor the electrolytic capacitor and the and the um, 
resistors. Um, there were some resistors on this side in the trail of the original video circuit that obviously I don't use because I disconnected uh, the stuff right in front of them so I don't need to take them off. And uh, these resistor values actually changed from the ones that were on the board so I ended up using different ones instead of taking the ones that were originally on the board. Uh, this filter, like I said, uh, came from back in here right down in there. I had to take off this shield to get to it. Uh, let's see what else. So yeah, composite video directly from the PPU comes out, gets amplified, gets filtered, and then goes back with a ground wire to our video jack, our RCA plug. And then this right here is stealing the audio from right under the bottom of the board right before it goes into the RF unit and that just goes to one jack and then gets duplicated over and then grounded uh, these all share a ground and that's that uh, it's pretty simple it's not entirely uh, simple obviously you have to know what you're doing here I just followed a schematic I found on the internet I'll probably post uh, a link to the thread where I found all that information I can't remember what form that was on on the sidebar, or I guess it could be down here depending on the resolution of this video. Um, so yeah, let's let's plug it in and see what the video looks like. And uh, you'll be surprised because it will be perfect. Literally perfect. Alright, here we are with Star Force. Turns on immediately. Doesn't that feel good? No fuss. Center this a little bit, and we'll play some Star Force. Um, I don't have any sound coming out. There we go. Jerk. Obviously my TV is not going to cooperate perfectly with the camera, so you still got that kind of rainbow effect. But you can see there's no lines and no actual distortion. So, let's see if I can do this. Get my 50,000 points. Yeah! There you have it. Oh, I wasn't paying attention. I was just staring at the camera. Um, modded NES2 top loader with composite video out. Um, relocating the actual video circuit off of the board and behind the shield. So, it looks just as good as the original NES and doesn't have any of that fuss. So, that's it. Have a good one. <laughs>